I won't give you his name, but I will tell you that when he was not reelected, finally, that somebody in the police department started playing on the on the intercom, born free. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know if you remember that time, those of you who are older, but there was such a contentiousness politically between that guy and his successor and the city council and the direction of the city. And I mean, even broke down to one time, the su successive mayor that came in brought a pig to a county council meeting on a leash with a sign that had stamp out and it had one of the council members' names on the sign. Uh, it sounds a little comical, but listen, it was not funny if you lived there. The crime rate was going up. People were disrespectful to police officers. Firefighters found themselves being well, sensing that they were, they were in dangerous situations when they were going into some neighborhoods, even to do rescue or firefighting or just to pick somebody up and take them to the hospital. We were sitting in a pastor's conference one day in that area, talking over lunch, and we were talking about this, and one of the guys speaks up and he says, you know, what do you expect from people? When they see what their leaders act like, what do you think they're going to do? These people follow the example of their leaders. And we've got all this going on out there. We've got false prophecy and false teaching from our political leaders. We've got a lot of it going on on college campuses. We've got some of it going on in churches. That's why John says, test the spirits. So how do we do that? Let me just give you some ideas, okay? First of all, to test the spirit, John says, listen to what they believe about the Lord Jesus. Next time a Mormon comes to your door or Jehovah's Witness, ask them. I don't want to hear anything about anything else but what you believe about Jesus. What do you believe about, about Jesus? And if it doesn't line up with what our Bible says, because i got to tell you, they didn't like what any of the English translation Bibles said, so leaders of the Jehovah's Witness Church created and published their own Bible for their own members called New World Translation. Okay? Watch out for that. That's where they're going to quote from. Listen to what they believe about the Lord Jesus. And I honestly believe that this is something that he writes because he's remembering something that Jesus said. You want me to tell you what it was? It was early in his ministry as he stood on a mountainside and talked to a crowd. Matthew chapter 7, when he said in verse 21 and following, not everybody that says to be Lord, Lord, is going to get into the kingdom of heaven. But only those who do the will of my Father, only those who obey my Father. Many on that day will say, Lord, did we not preach in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do miracles in your name? Jesus said, and I will say to them, depart from me, workers of iniquity, because I never knew you. So listen, you hear what you think is false teaching and the Holy Spirit's kind of uh, uh, picking your ears because you think this isn't right. Give attention to that and search through the scriptures to see how it lines up. If they have any reservations about Jesus being fully human and fully God, if they have any reservations about Jesus being absolutely sinless and the perfect substitute as a sacrifice for our sins, you need to walk away from it. 
Now here's a, a second thing. Are their teachings biblically and doctrinally correct? I watch this thing on Netflix called Waco. I found it very interesting. <laughs> it almost makes you feel sorry for the guy that was the leader. And the people that were following him were not just no-brainers, my friends. Some of them had advanced degrees. But they were captivated by charisma. I have no charisma. So if God does a work in your life and I've been preaching and teaching, it's because the Holy Spirit has done something and you responded. I have no charisma. But there are people that are captivated by charisma and they let the deceit slip by. <coughs> so ask yourself these questions. Is what this person teaching biblically and doctrinally correct? And by the way, this, this applies to female teachers as well as male. Here's another question. Is this person emotionally or psychologically manipulative? If they are, they're not depending on the Holy Spirit. Get away from them. Another question. How do they treat their family? Let me tell you something. If you ever have a pastor's wife or a pastor's kid that will say to you, my dad's not, he's different at home than he is when he's with you all. You need to say, what's going on here? How do they treat family? How do they treat staff members? How do they treat people that can't do anything for them? Are they kind? Are they gentle? Are they encouraging? Are they gentle? Here's another one. Do they shift attention from themselves to the Lord Jesus and to others? In other words, if you've got a guy that likes the limelight, if you've got a gal that wants the attention and she wants to be photographed and she wants to be heard, they're not deflecting the attention from themselves to the God who makes it happen. There may be a problem. And here's the, here's the last one. Do they put great focus on money? I'm not just talking about tithing to your local church. Y'all remember an incident a few years back when a guy named Creflo Dollar? You familiar with Creflo Dollar? Yay? You know that 50 Cent was his son? That bad, eh? It's not true either. Do you remember when Crepo Dollar was telling people that he needed a new jet? And that the jet he was looking at was $100 million, so he was going to talk to his church people about replacing his current jet with a $100 million jet? Now, if his people fly anywhere, I can almost guarantee you they fly coach. Don't you think? But this guy's focus is on health and wealth and prosperity gospel. And so, as I heard one guy that I knew that did that say, how can my people ever have faith enough if their pastor is not living at a level higher than they are? Get away from that. So, this is why false prophets come. It's a part of God's judgment. This is how we test the false prophets because when false prophets begin to proliferate, that's a time when there can be great revival within the church. That's what I believe is going to happen in the wake of this COVID crisis. I don't know if our economy will ever recover. I don't know what's going to happen in November in the election. What I do know is that God has a plan for his church and the church cannot be defeated because John told us, greater is the one who is in you than the one who is in the world. Amen. But here's the thing. Our destiny is not a matter of chance. With all the evidence presented 
we must accept the fact that this could possibly be God's judgment on America. It very well could be that our destruction as a culture or society is close at hand. But we're here. We're here. <clears throat> and in a day of moral weakness, moral cloudiness, spiritual impotence, we need to be a part of the revolution that's taking place in churches, the resurgence of the church. God said to Solomon in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, if my people, that's not a nation, that's people that belong to God. People have been called out and they belong to God. That's his church. If my people who are called by my name, we're called after the name of Christ. Now, I know in the United States of America, but almost everybody claims to be a Christian until you start talking to them about obedience, and then they don't want to talk about that. But we're named after the name of Christ. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Let me tell you something. That verse 30 has got to stick out at you. I sought for a man. I sought for someone who would repair the wall and stand in the gap before me behalf of the land and I found no one. I believe with all my heart that God is still looking for men and women and young people who will build up the wall as a hedge around his church and stand in the gap before him for the nation so that he should not destroy it. The question is, will you be one of those? Will you be one of those men or women who today will say, you know what? I don't want to be taken in by false prophets. I don't want to be one of those living in fear. I don't want to be one of those spiritually impotent Christians. I want to be all that God created me to be at this time and in this place. And so I'm going to accept God's challenge. I'm going to be one of those folks who's going to be an intercessor and stand in the gap before Him for my family and my church and my community and my state and my nation. we got to have prayer warriors. we got to have people that not only will pray, but people who will live the way prophets and priests and leaders are supposed to live according to God's Word. Take this seriously. You've been given a mission. You've been given a mission. Your mission, your vision, your purpose in life is to make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and to teach them to obey everything that God says to obey. And He's going to be with you. It may cost you something. It may cost you something. Our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren are depending on us to set the standard higher. Would you just commit yourself today to submit anew to Christ Jesus, our Lord, and ask Him to help you be submissive every day to the Holy Spirit so that you can become that person that stands in the gap for our nation. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you have given us your word.
which is complete and trustworthy. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us your Spirit. And that the Lord Jesus himself has told us that when the Spirit comes into our lives, that he will guide us into all truth. Well, the problem is, that's not going to happen if we never open your word, if we never read your word, if we never study your word. So God, I pray that today among us right here and any who hear this in the future, that you would raise up men and women and young people and even boys and girls who say, I want to be one of those. I want to be ready for the battles ahead. I want to be armored up and filled with the Spirit and take the sword of the Spirit and do and be everything that God wants me to do and be. Raise up warriors for the cause of the Lord Jesus from among these people today. And I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus, who is our strength, our power, our hope, and our Redeemer. Amen. Thank you so much. Anybody needs to talk, I'll be around for a little while. Be glad to talk with you. Uh, thank you to our graduates. Be praying for them. 9.30.